Welcome to the Education Over Debt Podcast. I am Sheena Hogan. I'm so glad you joined. This is a place where I give practical financial tips that anyone can understand and you can begin to implement now. Season three, we will have a guest sharing with you their money story and providing helpful tips for young professionals as they transition into adulthood. My hope is that you'll leave this conversation with a new perspective, tip, or strategy that you can begin to implement today. The Education Over Debt podcast is now streaming on Spotify, so be sure to check us out there and become a monthly supporter for as little as 99 cents per month. And if you haven't checked us out on our website, please visit us at educationoverdebt.com so that you can learn more about what we're doing in the community and become a supporter. Today's guest is Ms. Brandy Renee. Brandy is a professional development ex- executive with more than 15 years of experience growing with and driving performance management for one of the most iconic and well-respected global brands culture and talent motivator, minister and author of the book, Lessons at the Feet of Jesus. She is regarded as her natural penchant to connect with all personalities and cultures. Please help me welcome to the show, Miss Brandy Renee. Hi, Brandy. How are you doing today? I'm great, Shana. Thank you so much. Thank you again for joining me on the Education Over That podcast. So many of my viewers enjoyed you when you were on the first, uh, there was the last season, season two. And if you haven't, go ahead and check that out on YouTube. But Brandy really talked about partnering with God and how it's important for us as we grow in, with our money to partner with God and, and lean on him for direction and how we make our money decisions. So I had to have her back on the show today because now we're going in a little bit deeper with identifying some of those emotions that we have connected with money. With money, And I wanted to see what was her perspective in regards to how she connect her emotions with money and make decisions moving forward. So Brandy, with that being said, let's get right into it. Um, uh, what is the first thing that comes to mind when you think about money now? The first thing that comes to mind when I think about money now is resource. Um, I see money as not, I, I hear a lot of people use the term uh, financial freedom, but I see money as a resource that I can utilize to help bless other people and also be um, a, help to be a resource to help people grow. As you said, uh, you mentioned becoming a, a supporter of education over debt for just as little as 99 cents. And that's what I see to be able to bless, to help and to give to others. So that's what I see, how I see money now. Okay. And help me understand a little bit of your emotions that you may have connected with money. My emotions connected with money. First of all, for me, you always have to gauge your emotions as it's connected to money because your emotions can always lead you wrong. (laughs) That's the first thing. But there are two things I can draw from and I always have to draw and connect money back to biblical principle when I think about it, because if you look at money, the dollar bill says in God we trust. And so it's it's not the dollar that we trust in, but it's God. And I think about two different accounts in scripture. The first is the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler, as the Bible says, that he was not able to enter into the kingdom of heaven because he was so connected to his riches. He was so connected to money and things. And then we have Judas who sold Jesus out for coins, a bag of coins. And that that there, those two accounts remind me of just emotional decisions connected with finances, connected with things. And so for me, I always have to gauge, especially when I'm shopping or I have this need to shop, I have to gauge what is it that I'm feeling when we say things like, retail therapy. Is that really what I need? Is Do I need to go spend my money? Or is it that I need to evaluate what is making me feel that spending my money in a certain way is going to make me feel better or that's going to soothe me? So I always have to gauge and govern myself and my emotions so that I don't mishandle or become a bad steward of my finances. Oh, that's really good. And I really like those examples that you use with the rich young ruler and with Judas, because I never really thought about it from the emotional aspect. But yeah, what were they looking to get out of that emotionally? Maybe they thought that they would get a sense of status or um, maybe they would feel more valued or worthy in the community if they had these things or if like Judas turned Jesus over, maybe he would get that clout that he was looking for. Maybe he grew up feeling like he was less than or what have you. So that's very interesting that you looked at those two instances really to see how their emotions may have been connected with how they spent the money in those situations that may not have been for the best for each of them, actually. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Yeah. And so, um, and I like the fact that you mentioned about the whole retail therapy and then really having to gauge what emotion is tied to this item that I'm going to buy. Because currently I'm in the market looking for somewhere to stay, a house or some type of home ownership. And I really had to gauge that. It, I've been shocked. It's, it's costing a little bit more than I thought it would cost here. And I really like where I say in Chicago that costs a lot less. So um, those are some things that we definitely have to reevaluate our emotions to see what is driving our decision making in regards to the things that we purchase. Yeah, so I really, really like that. Do you have any emotions that you constantly have to check um, when you are like spending or saving or et cetera? Yeah, I, and then listen to you, Shayna, talk about where you grew up. We both grew up in North Carolina, in two very different uh, states, I mean, sorry, cities, and very similar background because we both come from single parent homes. And so uh, we know that it, resources can be very limited when that happens. And you begin to see how our, your parents use money and the words that they use, like, I don't have or uh, I'm broke, those kind of things. I don't ever use those words. Those are not words that come out of my mouth about I don't have and I'm broke. Um, but something else that my mother used to always say is keeping up with the Joneses. Now, no, no offense to any Joneses that may be listening to the podcast today, but keeping up with the Joneses is a term that is used. And it's one of those colloquialisms that is used to kind of indicate that we're always trying to keep up with somebody. Even when you said you like the neighborhood that you're in and you like, um, you, you like that, uh, what, what, that the neighborhood that you were in, even in Chicago, which is a very affluent neighborhood as well, because we both <laughs> live there in Chicago, but it is affluent because it's connected to our past president, mm -hmm. uh, uh, past uh, President Barack Obama. And so there's a lot of affluence in that neighborhood. And with that, thinking about money and emotions, even me growing up in a single parent home with a twin, meaning this double of everything and the resources were limited at the time that I have to always, the more financial gain that I get, I always have to govern my emotions as it relates to money. Even as simple as doing something where you're in the bed and some of us have traded social media scrolling to Amazon scrolling and we're not <laughs> promoting anything here. There are no financial gains from any of this of what I'm saying. But I noticed that I've done that, 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 that online boutique shops and more of the e-commerce has really gained a lot from emotional spending habits of the consumer. Because when we don't feel like going anywhere, and especially in, in the midst of the pandemic that is still going on, we have done a lot of e-commerce shopping. And oftentimes, because we love to see packages come and we love to get mail that is outside of bills, we want to shop. We want to go to the door, open that door, and see this big package with a smile on it, or this big package that we've been waiting on. And now these e-commerce companies are making it faster and easier to get and easier for you to get your money. So it, as you said, you're at home working all day. You don't get out much and you may not feel like going to go to a, a, a shopping store or, or go to the local uh, boutique that you'd rather be at home and you'd rather get this package. And so when you have this emotion of spending and it's easy to click a button and pay now and you're not looking at your account and you've forgotten about the complete budget that you set out, you end up, if you really look at it, you end up spending two or $300 or more a month just on e-commerce shopping. That is so good, Brandy. I just want to jump in because you said something. I, I used to work with people with money. They didn't open up their mail. Like they would come in and you had the red notices, mail, the, like the paper be turning yellow and everything. And so when you said just going online shopping and seeing a package with a smile on it, never even thought about that, but Amazon has a little smile. It does make you feel good or it could make you feel good in that moment. Like, oh, look at me getting a package or, you know, getting some gifts, you know, for myself, showing that I am worthy of getting me gifts or a package or what have you. So yeah, it, it totally, I could totally see how that could be um, something that we do have to govern more since it's so easily accessible now on the internet. Like who knew? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even when you talked about um, staying in Chicago, like we say, you know, by President Barack Obama's house, I didn't even think about the influence in the neighborhood. I think what I liked so much about it was just the ease of access to everything. Like within 10 minutes, we could get to 
shops, um, you know, stores. Uh, I used to get my hair and my nails done on 53rd, Target, go get something to eat from the restaurant late night. We had a movie theater, just so much right there at our fingertips within like 10 to 15 minutes. And I feel like here at home, I think I got used to that. And, you know, here we had to really drive. <laughs> yeah. Whereas in yeah. Chicago, we could walk up there if we wanted to. Like, I would walk up there pretty often in the summertime. Mm-hmm. And so I think that is one of those things where I really had to, you know, think about. And is that still important to me now? I don't really think I want to stay in the suburbs. You know, just really kind of thinking through all that. And what does that mean to me? Like, is there a sense of um, being limited? I guess it is the word or, you know, just how much I have to put into to get out and go do things. Right. Like you just talked about the ease of things coming to your home. So, yeah, those are all like things that I guess I never really thought about that deeply. But it is something that we have to consider um, as we do have this as we live in this community where it's so much technology, so much e-commerce. Things are so easy for us to get through, get to. So we really had to think through how we spend our money as a result. So that is um, good. Do you have anything that you kind of use to manage your money with now? Any best practices you use? Yeah, best practice I have, I came across, uh, actually, when I decided to buy my home here in Illinois, I was coming out of a season of lack and insufficiency. So I decided to put a budget together. And oftentimes I'll say this to you, Sheena, that, and you know this as well, because you are in the financial market, that when it comes to money, no one really wants to look at it. It's easy to spend it, but to really get the real story about our money and the real story will tell you that your emotions have driven your buying decisions and buying habits and spending habits. But I had to really take the, uh, the the chance, the opportunity and the time to really budget. I put together I, and I just searched. I said, and I really sincerely, I prayed and I said, Lord, I need to find a really good budget that I can understand. I was using a tool that was very challenging for me to use, but now I have a simple Excel spreadsheet that I found online that was already pre-populated with so many different expenses and controllables that we have. Now I am a, a management professional, so I know how to look at budgets. I know how to gauge budgets and look at profit and loss statements and see where we need to save, whether it be labor and things like that. So I needed to apply those same principles to my own life, that if I'm helping a corporation save money for them, then what am I doing for me? I need to do that. And so I utilize those same principles of understanding profit and loss statements to apply that to my own budget. And I have line items. I like to see line by line where I'm spending money. And I do even allocate everything. I allocate what I buy in e-commerce. I allocate if I buy someone a birthday present, I budget that in as well. I allocate tithing, seed sewing, loans. I allocate gas, beauty, whether it be hair, nails, makeup, lashes, all those things I allocate in my budget to see where it's going. And the budget, I heard someone say this, your budget is like your mother. It's going to tell you what you can do and what you can, and you need to stick to it. And I, I, I use an external resource. I won't, I won't quote that person in, or the name here because obviously uh, this is your platform, but I, I use that and I thought that was so important. So I use a simple spreadsheet that helps me. I get my monthly statement because I'm paid monthly and I go through it line by line and budget those items out. And I also allocate for changes when there's increases in finances as well. And I increase my savings. As I say, the key principles that I use with my money and finances, and this helps me govern emotionally, 10% goes to God every time. I cannot have the financial gain, resources, or any of that without giving him his first 10. I also live by 20% of my finances I give to myself because everybody should be rewarding themselves. Okay? You have to be smart with that as well. And then I have another savings program that my family has implemented in the last year for us as a family to build wealth. And I take, we we have the simple little game that we play is you pull cards with numbers on them. And the numbers are, are numbered from one to 100 and based on the weeks of your pay. So for me, I get paid monthly. I pull four cards out. That's the amount of money that I put in a separate savings account that I don't even look at. It just continues to grow. I don't touch. And that's how I manage my money and govern that. Now, when it comes to spending, I always have to gauge, do I need this? I'll give you an example. I'll be turning 40 in a couple months. 
And I want to do something big. <laughs> you know that because we <laughs> talked about traveling together. On the, uh, and there's three things that are on my list. And I have to honestly gauge this. And I've, in, I've included my boyfriend who we are in a courtship and considering the, and, and talking about marriage. And so now I'm starting to include him on my financial decisions as well. And there's three things that I said I want to do. Either buy me a new car. My car is paid off, but buy a new car. Buy a bigger home or go on a trip. And here's the things that I had to consider in order to silence my emotions. Because you're turning 40, that's a milestone. Everybody gets excited about that. But to govern my emotions, a car depreciates. Okay, although the car is not very expensive, it will depreciate. So is it worth it when I have a fully functioning vehicle that has not given me any trouble? Do I need a new home now or should I save for when I get married and we can get a larger home together? Do I save, although my finances are increasing, do I save? And third, do I pay for an experience, something that is tangible and I can take it at the moment that costs way less than all, all of the other two op options? And that's how I have to make those decisions and govern my emotions based on my spending habits. That's a good example. Yes, I do want to travel. And I have been thinking about that too for my birthday. Um, this year, I feel like I've done a lot. I've been home for almost a year now. And I feel like I've done a lot um, for myself personally, professionally this year. And I was thinking about traveling too, but because of COVID, I was also a little concerned about going out of country. And I think I was thinking of maybe I could just travel somewhere in the United States and call it a day as I try to look for a home. So um, we'll see how it goes. But yes, those are definitely some different categories, really thinking about does this appreciate, depreciate? Is this a short-term gain, a long-term thing, commitment, or, you know, all those are good questions that you ask yourself really to gauge how you would go about spending your money or how you go about making those decisions for the money. So all of that is great. And so with that being said, um, I've been doing a, um, you know, I do rapid fire questions. Uh -huh. And so I want to do some rapid fire questions with you as we come to an end. And it's only three questions. And I may have asked you some of these questions last time. So we'll see. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. So paper, plastic, paper. paper, best advice you receive or worst advice you receive? Best advice I've received is under promise over deliver. OK. And then my last question is recently Jeff Bezos gave one hundred million dollars to Van Jones and said, use it how you want. If someone was to call you tomorrow to give you one hundred million dollars, what do you think you would do with the money? I would do two, uh, a couple things. First, I would definitely give to my church. We are in a church building fund, so I would certainly definitely ensure that we had the funds to go ahead and break ground, either build or buy a location. Second, I would create a scholarship fund for mothers that are single mothers going back to school to better themselves and their families. And third, I would certainly create also a, a fund to be able to help other students at our, our alma mater, which is North Carolina Central University in Durham, North Carolina, the most prestigious HBCU <laughs> on the land. And that's what I would do with those resources. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Brandy, for joining us on the show. And thank you for sharing your feedback and thoughts on how you manage your emotions. Have a, I will talk with you soon. Thank you so much, Shane. And thank you, education over that community. All right. Wow. Talking to Brandy, she shares some great insight on how we can manage our emotions and questions we should ask ourselves when we decide to buy things. Is it a short term or long term impact? Is this going to be something for a temporary experience or is this something that I'm going to be constantly making payments on for the next 20 years? Or is it something that's going to depreciate or appreciate in value? So we totally thank our guest, Brandy, and all that she shared with us. I am Sheena Ho. Remember to live life, love life, and be well.